Good morning to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Pro and HD video update. For the third day of June 2014, of course it is hurricane season, both in the eastern Pacific and in the Atlantic. And we have another tropical depression that has developed here, number 2E, the E for East Pacific, of course. And it's down here tucked into the Gulf of Tehuantepec, right off the Central American, Southeastern Mexican coastline here. You can see on the track map from the National Hurricane Center site, tucked in right here, this is the Gulf of Tehuantepec. Fairly small system forecast to become a tropical storm and move up here into southeastern Mexico, bringing heavy rain. That will be the primary threat. And remember, I emphasize this a lot, try to drill it into people's heads that the impacts of tropical cyclones are far and wide. What they lack with wind, they make up for with water uh, many, many times. So please keep that in mind. So here's an infrared satellite loop of the region. And you can see, here's our system down here. Fairly poorly organized depression. Uh, some stronger upper level winds cutting across this region still due to the fact that it's still early in the season. We don't have the large areas of relaxed upper level winds just yet. And so these systems are not too explosive to develop, which is a good thing. Nevertheless, pretty heavy rainfall underneath some of this deeper convection that we see here over southeast Mexico. So any interests in that region need to keep that in mind. Some of this energy may try to get across this little thin strip of land down here, fairly thin, geographically speaking, and uh, get a foot in the water over here in the southern Gulf of Mexico where we might see a low pressure area develop. This is a very large upper level low pressure system spinning around to the north and east of Bermuda, well to the east of Cape Hatteras in North Carolina. Later in the season, we would watch something like that for the potential for it to work its way down to the surface, become more warm core, focused energy, and maybe develop into something. But in early June, not going to be the case. It's just a large area of cold air rotating counterclockwise in the upper levels of the atmosphere. So what do things look like over the coming weeks? Well, we use the Madden-Julian oscillation here to help guide us as to when the windows of opportunity may open. And right now, the GFS and its ensemble members, those different model runs that are initiated with slightly different variables to give you a different output, uh, very much like an orchestra has an ensemble group of wind instruments, for example. You may have one soloist that does a really good job, and that's what we call the operational GFS. And then you may have a 20-member um, wind ensemble that collectively sounds really, really good, right? And sometimes they don't, depending on the skill level. But I think you get the analogy. So we have all these different model runs of the same model, the ensemble group. And generally speaking, they're showing a, a Madden-Julian oscillation of favorable upward motion uh, being fairly nondescript here over the next couple of weeks. When we see it amplified like this, as we did in, uh, back in May, uh, this is when we had the Eastern Pacific powerful hurricane Amanda form, is when the Madden-Julian oscillation was over here. But you can see the next couple of weeks, it's pretty close to the circle, meaning that it's not very pronounced in the atmosphere. And so we don't think there's going to be much activity anywhere in the globe. We don't see the Madden-Julian oscillation over here in the maritime continent region, which would be generally Indonesia and through the um, Philippines, I guess, and then in the Western Pacific, more so that region than anywhere else. Um, it, we just don't see a strong pulse of upward motion uh, from the GFS. And if we look at the Euro, slightly different uh, output here uh, from it and its ensemble groups showing that maybe the Madden-Julian Oscillation will take off and amplify towards the Maritime Continent region, uh, which again is over towards Indonesia uh, and that area. Um, nothing in the Western Pacific, though, and this is really interesting. Global tropical cyclone activity is still very low overall, and without a lot of upward motion over here, we really can't pump the mechanism that gets the El Nino to sustain itself. 
and uh, I've been talking about the El Nino a lot. Um, and you know, yesterday's hurricane season forecast from Colorado State's Dr. Phil Klotzbach indicated a slowing of the progression of the El Nino, and therefore he raised the forecast numbers just a little bit so that we're only talking about a slightly below average Atlantic hurricane season forecast. So, you know, I mean, things change as new data comes in. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I never thought the El Nino was going to be very strong uh, based on just the data that was present every week. Uh, but anyway, enough about that. The Madden-Julian Oscillation not going to help out tropical cyclone activity in the western Pacific and therefore most likely not going to contribute to the El Nino very much. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, we see the GFS here with our tropical mischief down in the eastern Pacific. Some of that energy does try to kind of bleed over into the southern Gulf of Mexico, but over the next five days we really don't see very much to be concerned with in terms of a big wind event. However, all of these blue colors you see in here and the occasional purple indicates pretty heavy tropical rainfall, and I cannot emphasize that enough. It's the impact of whatever hazards do come your way. And in this case, there's a lot of rainfall associated with what is a weak tropical depression. And the presence of all this moisture down here uh, could be a big problem <clears throat> over the next several days, as is my apparent sore throat. Um, so why don't I call it a day? You are updated now on the tropics. And it looks like it's going to be quiet for the next several days, for the most part. No major threats, so that's good. Thanks for tuning in. Again, I am Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. Always a privilege and an honor to produce these videos for you to enjoy and hopefully learn something from on Hurricane Pro in HD. I'll talk to you again next week.